Good evening, and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. The interview with Dr. Gilbert Levin that a lot of you know about now is fast approaching. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, in two days, or rather one day from the time that I'm going to be releasing this episode, I will be interviewing the first individual to ever look for life on another planet, at least up close and personal. And this is Dr. Gilbert Levin, who is in charge of the life experiments on the Viking spacecraft, both Viking 1 and 2 back in 1976. So as we get closer to this interview, I thought that it would be appropriate to release an old video of mine that had to do with this particular subject, or at least was somewhat related to it. And the question was, are we likely to destroy Mars as we have done so much damage to our own planet, and in so doing, also destroy any life that may exist there? Now, I've talked a little bit about how difficult it would be for us to do any harm to life on the Red Planet, but still, just in principle, would we end up doing the same thing there that we've done here? Lots of people have brought this up, and they talk about it as a reason for us not to colonize other planets because we don't seem to be very responsible in terms of taking care of this one. So would we be likely to do the same thing to Mars that we've done to Earth? Well, that's the question that I asked in this episode, and... I had a number of answers that had to do with life on Mars and other subjects. But before we plunge into that, I have something to show you. As many of you know, I recently went to Cape Canaveral, and I got something that you folks may think I would have never put my hands on, and that is a Boeing Starliner coffee cup. You may not be able to see it from the glare. There's the Boeing logo. Now, why the hell would I have done that? Well, I've got one reason. I'm looking to hit 40,000 subscribers. As some of you may remember, a long time ago when I first started this channel, I destroyed things that pissed me off. Not to say that I hope that the Starliner blows up or anything along those lines, although I do hope, actually, that it fails its second test that's coming up at the end of this year when there are no humans on board for it to kill. Because I do think, as I've said before, that Boeing is going to keep cutting corners and keep reducing costs and keep using their influence with their buddies at NASA and their buddies at Congress to save money at the risk of astronauts' lives. And I do believe that the Starliner will eventually kill somebody. So it is my hope that their mission fails before they get the opportunity. So why do I have this coffee cup? Well, like I say, if once I hit 40,000 subscribers, I am going to blast this thing into small bits. And with the help of my friends here in Greenville, South Carolina, who run a fireworks store and were all too happy to help me blow things up in the past. So this coffee cup is going right next to the Crew Dragon. Ugh sacrilege, and there it is going to stay until I hit 40,000 subscribers. And then in a moment of glory, I'm going to blast that thing apart. So let's get to 40,000 subs. Seems like a tall order, but I like to think big. So in any event, let's get the way back machine going and transport ourselves back about five months into the past to an episode that very few of you have seen and then investigate the question, are we likely to destroy the planet that we're about to colonize? Will we do to Mars what we've done to Earth or do we have a different objective in mind? So let's get going on this topic right now.
Opponents of Mars colonization have always had a powerful argument. What happens if humans decide to export their destructive and exploitive ways to another planet? I mean, granted, Mars is mostly dead, but what happens if it harbors life somewhere? Wouldn't that be the ultimate crime? Well, at one point, I started a video about this particular subject, but it didn't exactly go the way that I had planned. And I'm hoping to give it another shot, but here's how I started it out. What happens if we decide to exploit Mars the way that we've exploited Earth? Well, I have an answer for that question. This coin here represents the Earth, and this one represents the Moon, a distance of about a quarter of a million miles. Now, to show you just how impractical it would be to try to exploit Mars, as opposed to the Moon, which has a lot of resources as well, here's Mars, and now I'm going to go ahead and show you just how far away this is. Ow! Son of a... The exploitation of Mars. Is that something that we need to be concerned about? After all, as I mentioned, exploiting the moon and near-Earth asteroids would be a whole lot easier. And they have a lot of valuable minerals. The moon, for example, has an ample supply of hydrogen-3, which would be incredibly useful here, where it's quite valuable and also a large amount of titanium, in addition to many other types of minerals that could be exploited. Near-Earth asteroids, much closer than Mars, also contain an enormous amount of uh, exploitable resources. So, do we really need to worry about Mars? Well, many people say that we do. And there are certain things that I suppose might support their viewpoint. I mean, we humans don't have a great track record when it comes to our own planet. And even champions of the environment like Elon Musk have made some pretty extreme suggestions when it comes to terraforming Mars, which has caused some concern. In fact, Gilbert Levin, who was in charge of the experiments testing for microbial life on the Viking spacecraft way back in 1976, maintains to this day that his experiments detected microbial life on Mars. He actually opposes the notion of returning any samples from the Red Planet for fear that it would start a pandemic on Earth, and at least gives us the indication that we should... I mean, think about it for a moment. What would really motivate anybody to go to Mars, especially somebody motivated by greed and avarice? I mean, it's so far away, and there are so many ways that that planet can kill you. I mean, that's the whole reason that so many detractors of the whole notion of colonizing Mars make their arguments. It is such a dangerous place, and the only way that we could possibly survive is if we cooperated, if we relied on each other. Because if there's a problem with our environmental and life support systems that we can't resolve, we're dead. There's no way support can come in time. If there's a problem with an individual's spacesuit, unless the others around him render him immediate aid, him or her, that person's dead. As I said, so many ways to die. And the only motivation that somebody would have to go to Mars is the self-sacrificing desire of creating a second home for the human species when, keep in mind, I'm saying when and not if, a major cataclysm strikes Earth and endangers our species. That's the only reason to go to that planet. That's the only reason Elon Musk has brought up for going to Mars. Whereas Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin, they're interested in exploiting near-Earth asteroids, the moon, things that are a lot more commercially viable. Something to consider. 
Now, obviously, there are bad apples in every bunch, but given that the only motivation to go to Mars is for scientific discovery and for the preservation of the human species, neither of which are particularly greedy motivations, what kind of people are going to end up being Martian colonists? Call me idealistic, but this is what I expect Martian colonists to be like like astronauts, the best and brightest amongst us who have been exploring space for decades since the time of Skylab when they risked their lives in a tiny tin can orbiting the Earth where they could have died at any moment, any day, for the sheer joy and wonder of exploring this universe to the best of their ability. To the present day on the ISS, People of all nationalities and all backgrounds working hard in unison and sometimes taking a few moments to enjoy themselves. Although there have certainly been tense moments, to our knowledge there's not been a single incident of a single punch having been thrown on the ISS or a single case of sexual harassment or anything else that tends to plague our civilization. Instead, no matter what the geopolitical situation on Earth, these people cooperate, work together towards a common goal, a common vision, just as the explorers of Mars will. As I said, I may be idealistic about this, but when the only motivation is to explore a new place and to preserve the species, these are the only kinds of human beings who are going to give up the comforts of Earth and take the risk to go all the way to Mars simply for those kinds of rewards. Plus, I suppose, the rewards available to just about anybody who experiences microgravity and the fun that can be had in it. I have to admit, I'm a bit envious. And then, upon arriving at their destination, exploring places like this, the Valles Marineris, or the tallest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons. Once again, just drink in that image for a moment. And by the way, keep in mind, that these people maintain this level of human decency and professionalism even when they live in isolation and under a great deal of psychiatric stress for weeks, months, or sometimes as long as a year. It's astonishing. Like I said, they're the best and brightest amongst us and the ones who are the most likely to explore and choose to stay on the red planet. And by the way, I also agree with Gilbert Levin. There are many, many strong indications that his tests were correct. The high presence of methane in the Martian atmosphere indicates that there is life on the planet. There are other explanations, but there is far more methane in the Martian atmosphere than there should be. On top of that, most of the Martian atmosphere is comprised of CO2. Under constant bombardment from cosmic rays, that should now be carbon monoxide. The only reason that there would be that much CO2 in the atmosphere, well, not the only reason, but the reason that I like to believe, is that something is producing it. Something is breathing and producing more CO2. And I am convinced that the types of people who are going to settle on Mars are going to give any life that they discover a wide berth and do everything they can to preserve it rather than destroy it in an effort to exploit the planet. And by the way, the whole notion pisses me off and you knew this was coming. Just about every expert who's interviewed about the colonization of Mars says that eventually, ultimately, 
people who give in to our worst natures, the things that sometimes make us a despicable species, are eventually going to go to Mars and start screwing it up. Why? Why would they do that? Why would they give up the comforts of Earth to travel all that distance when there are so many other places closer to this planet that they could exploit? It doesn't make any sense. In my opinion, the people who go to Mars, the people who will one day call themselves Martians, are going to be a totally new breed of human being. The best and brightest amongst us, as I've said a couple of times now, who are going to achieve marvelous things for the human species and ensure that we go on even if some cataclysm strikes the planet. And here's a recent update. Both the Curiosity rover and the Trace Gas Orbiter from the ESA and Roscosmos have also detected oxygen, which seems to appear and disappear in seasonal variations in the same manner as the methane in Mars' atmosphere. And just in case you want to have a look at it, there it is. All natural explanations for this phenomena have fallen flat. However, there are bacteria here on Earth that naturally consume perchlorates, which are present in Martian soil, and give off oxygen as a byproduct. Could we actually make use of Martian life to produce more oxygen and aid with our terraforming efforts? And by the way, for those of you who enjoy charts, here are readings that were taken from the Curiosity rover by season. Although there is some variation definitely in both the oxygen and the methane, clearly it increases in the summer and decreases in the winter. If this is indeed produced by Martian life, it could produce a natural greenhouse gas, methane, to warm up the planet, and of course oxygen, which we're all going to need. Many terraforming advocates have talked about using Earth bacteria in order to produce the necessary gases to terraform the planet, but it may not be necessary. We may just have to use the bacteria that's already there and help it to thrive. If you had the opportunity tomorrow, would you go to Mars knowing that you could not come back? Would you make that kind of commitment? Very few would. The only reason I would is if I knew that my kids were established in their own jobs and were self-sufficient. Then I would make the journey because it would be my dream to end my life on another world. Obviously, that's not going to happen with me. I'm too old, but I would, and I suspect I'm among a very, very small minority. But I'd like to hear your opinions. If you had the chance, would you go and why? So there's your challenge. Thanks for watching. I'm the Angry Astronaut, and as always, Stay angry about space.